to uh, on behalf of the Blue Fair Region YMCA, welcome everyone to the uh, 2016 annual dinner. Thank you for a great turnout. Um, we'll have a uh, upcoming in location. Uh, we'll enjoy performance by our fantastic Y Arts group, and uh, then have salad and a buffet style dinner. So uh, to kick things off, Maria. It's my honor to give the invocation this evening, and I always start off with our YMCA prayer. Many of you may not know that there is a YMCA prayer. Um, it's one that's said all around, I would guess, the world. I'm also going to bless our feast together before our wonderful singer start. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for the Booth Bay Region YMCA. We pray that our vision may be renewed to unite all in God's love. While we're working for the development of spirit, mind, and body, help us associate our efforts for the growth of your kingdom. Give us vision and faith that we may work for truth, justice, and love. We pray for all of the YMCA's across the world. O oh God, transform us into strong links of a strong chain. Help us to embrace this day with open hearts and to share your good gifts with gladness and generosity of spirit. O oh God, bless this feast, this gathering, and us to your humble service. Make us ever mindful of the needs of others through you who creates, redeems, and sustains all creation. Amen. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Emily Morabli, and I'm the Arts and Humanities Director here at the Y. Um, tonight we have a cast of 50 kids for you, and they will be performing at the end of this month at the Lincoln Theater, the premiere performance of I Love Maine, the musical. Um, now, I Love Maine is a new musical written by a good friend of mine, Joel Byron, some of you may know him, um, and we are very excited to present this show on April 29th, April 30th, and May 1st, and we would love for you all to come see it, right kids? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so if you'd like to get tickets for that show, we do have them on sale at the front desk. And I think after seeing this performance, you will want to come see the show. Here we go. So I'd like to add that with this group, it's a collaboration with the CLC YMCA. We have 25 kids from CLC and 25 kids from Booth Bay. 
So it's really awesome that we're able to come together for this production. And this last Saturday, we had our first rehearsal with the whole cast, and they put tonight's performance together for you. So our next number is our four superfoods, and our guide for the production, Emmy. Our superfoods are Spencer, Meg, Jordan, and Della. Here they are.
So I'd like to say thank you to everybody and start with our awards and recognition program. So please uh, feel free to get your dessert if you haven't had it. Um, uh, but uh, this event could not uh, happen without volunteers. Uh, and a lot of what we do here at the Y couldn't happen without volunteers. On the back of your program, you can see the people that helped put this event together. Um, really want to thank Boathouse Bistro. They did a great job catering this event. Awesome food and food choices. And Emily, you make us proud. We look forward to um, seeing I Love Maine, the musical. Um, list of others, I want to thank the trustees for putting together uh, the hors d'oeuvres and the greenhouse. Uh, our Leaders Club in the back that is helping us out and volunteering as wait staff. Um, And I don't know if a lot of people know, but uh, John Trees is in residence here at the YMCA. One of our many partnerships is with uh, our community access station and we house Channel 7. And one of the benefits of that is um, all the AV help and support. And John, I really want to thank and recognize you. You're a past recipient of the Character Development Award, but he does so much for this community and helps um, provide access um, and see all the great things that we do, especially around our youth. So thank you very much. And uh, last but not least, least those people that uh, have helped set up, but there's someone who um, certainly couldn't do it uh, without uh, their support, and they did not go far. So uh, Doris retired last year, uh, but she was back again this year. And um, although I'd really like to thank all those that helped set up this morning, their names are at the bottom, I'd really like to um, have Doris and Pauline come up for a special thank you in pulling this together. So before I um, turn it over, we do have a small video to show you, and a lot of people said, who is Zoe? Uh, so Zoe is uh, running for office, uh, potentially in 2064, but Zoe represents the potential in all of us, not just the young people uh, whose names and ideas and wishes you see at your table and around the room, uh, but they really represent what we can do um, as a community when we all come together. And there's some great dreams on there. There's one from Ford about, you know, I'd like my dad not to have to work. Um, and it, for those who know Ford, his dad travels and comes home every weekend. But, uh, you know, he jumps in a plane and flies down to Florida and uh, he's just part of our family here. Uh, we have, you know, Chris who wants to make the world better. Uh, there's a lot of kids who talked about making sure that there was food for everybody and world peace. Um, but there's just some great ideas, no different than uh, what we hear um, you know, from some of our politicians and sometimes not so good, but they really are big dreamers. And the why is so much more than gym and swim. It really is about nurturing the potential of, of everybody and we couldn't do it without the support of all of you in this room and the many other people in our community that helped do it. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Emily. It's a very short video clip. Jen, maybe you can hit the lights in the back. Um, and then after that, we'll continue on with our awards and recognition. to go to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry for one day to learn magic. <laughs> that everybody is treated equally. Everyone can have their own beliefs. I will give everybody gummy worms. <laughs> I will give everybody to have a smile and feel good about themselves. If I were president for a day, I would make sure all toothpaste tastes good so everyone's teeth would stay clean. <laughs> I'd make everyone have food and water. I will get candy to everyone. I would make sure everyone has a good school experience. 
I would let everyone have a magical creature. I want everybody to have a house. I would make sure there is no war in the world. I wish to help people that don't have homes. I want everybody to have a car. I would hope for everyone to have peace in the world. I would expect everyone to treat nature with respect. Fridays should be free ice cream day for everyone. I would make sure all schools had a non-bullying rule. If I were president for the day, I would try to clean up as much litter as I could to keep the earth clean. I make sure everyone had food and water. I'd want to help all wildlife. I would make sure everybody had shoes and clothing. To make everyone happy, my motto would be unicorns rule the world. <laughs> I want to be president. 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 Uh, thank you, Emily, for putting that together, and um, you know, to all the kids that shared their inspirations and dreams. And again, thank all of you that helped make that possible, because throughout your support um, and things like the annual support campaign and the other things that you do as volunteers in our community, it wouldn't be possible. Um, at this point, I'd like to ask Lisa Van Dyke to come up and uh, have a first recognition. Lisa. It was an incredible privilege to work with John and Jane Lunt last year as they chaired our annual fund. In getting to know them, I learned about how the Booth Bay Region YMCA has been a part of their family for four generations. Over the generations, the Y has been a place to connect socially, stay healthy, swim competitively, go to camp, have summer jobs, and support their community through volunteerism. As a newcomer to the region, the Lunt story was one of my first insights into how integral the Y is in this community, and that has been reaffirmed over and over again. Just as the Y is integral to the community, the annual fund, which the Lunt's chaired, is really integral to our organization and our ability to give back. One of every four members receives assistance from the annual fund, and charitable contributions allow us to offer outreach programs such as Arts for All, Live Strong, and Water Safety. So thank you, John and Jane, for your leadership, your willingness to share your story, and your dedication to the YMCA. Emily will now present the first Youth of the Year Award. Hi, everybody. Okay. <laughs> um, our next award, as Lisa said, is the Youth of the Year Award. This award is given to youth of our community who embody what the YMCA is all about. Tonight, we honor them not only for their guidance and mentorship of our younger members, but also for their leadership throughout our programs. Our first recipient came to the Y at a very young age to join the Y Arts Kitty Choir. Years later, he would return to the same program as a mentor and friend to all our young singers. For the last 10 years, this young man has been a confident and enthusiastic performer and friend to us all. From painting his body blue as the genie at the Junior Theater Festival, to being a good sport with his campers and donning toilet paper dresses in the toilet paper princess pageants, his commitment to the Y and our program shines through. As this young man has become a not-so-young man, his volunteer efforts in Y Arts have helped performers of all ages. He first started volunteering in Kitty Choir. His patience and care for the program was apparent as he enthusiastically entertained our youngest shining stars. 
Through the years, he has also volunteered in our Arts for All program, and last summer, along with Ben Betts, he hosted and ran the open mic nights at Camp Knickerbocker. Coming up in a couple months, he will also be returning as a counselor at Music Theater Camp for his second summer. I've learned through the years that I can count on this young man to always be a trustworthy role model and friend to all the youth in our programs. He welcomes every child with open arms and strives to create the fun and safe environment that Y Arts is all about. When it comes to the Y's core values of caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility, he's got it all. I will miss him very much when he graduates and moves on in the next couple years, but I know we must share this wonderful person with the rest of the world. Please give a warm welcome for our first Youth of the Year, my student and friend, Rick Hilscher. Up next, I'd like to welcome Logan to join me for our second Youth of the Year. Um, our next recipient also started off in Kitty Choir, um, and she also embodies all the Y has to offer. From a Y Arts perspective, uh, she has grown up in the program and now gives back by volunteering throughout the year. In her time with Y Arts, she has helped with the Kitty Choir, Arts for All, and more recently with our youth productions of Winnie the Pooh and I Love Maine. Her fun and supportive attitude has helped nervous youth make their way on stage, and we are truly grateful for her support. This team joined the Y at a very young age and ever since has seized every opportunity to develop her leadership skills, go as an individual, and volunteer on multiple occasions. This year, we are giving this award to her because she continuously demonstrates the YMCA's core values, caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility. This year, she has volunteered for many events within the Leaders Club, including taking multiple days during her February break to help me organize and revitalize the Teen Center. She has also volunteered her time within Youth Sports, the Y Cafe, March Madness, and Youth Dances. This summer, she is taking it a step further and has been accepted into the YMCA's Counselor and Training Program at Camp Huckins. There, she will not only continue self-growth, but she will encourage and lead, lead others to realize their full potential. We witnessed her growth, we share her success, and we hope all youth and teens follow in her footsteps. It is, with great, it is with great pleasure to present tonight's second Youth of the Year Award to this special team. Please join me in congratulating Lincoln Hamlet. Up next, we'd like to welcome Shane Pennington with the Program Service Award. Good evening, everyone. So glad to see you. such a wonderful turnout. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm the Aquatics Director, and I have a wonderful um, privilege and honor to introduce you to the Program Service Award this year, recipient this year. Um, last year, we spoke about paying it forward in our community and in our why. Um, this individual, when asked if she would step up and help um, assist in the swim lesson program, she said yes. Uh, she dove into the pool with um, energy and excitement and support, and she never looked back. Uh, in the fall of 2015, she stepped up to be um, our administrative assistant swim coach. Um, she trained um, to do all the certifications required in that position. Um, she leads by example with her inspirational bright smile and her positive attitude and her can-do work ethic. I would like to bring Heather Hills up to receive this year's program service award. Thank you, Coach. Come on up. Next up is the Volunteer of the Year Award presented. Um, Jonathan Tindall is going to come up and present that award. Thank you.
Good evening. Hi. This year's Volunteer of the Year has long been committed to the well-being of our peninsula. Like all volunteers, she is passionate about improving the quality of life in our community, and our Y has benefited tremendously from her gifts in time, skills, and leadership. This year's recipient is a great listener, planner, and delegator. She is dynamic, focused, and solutions-oriented. She has served as our board president, board governance chair, finance committee member, human resource committee member, chairperson for the Camp Knickerbocker Strategic Task Force, and committee member for uh, the Public Policy Committee advocating for the uh, YMCA Alliance in the state of Maine at the state level. If those credentials aren't enough, it's been reported to me that she is an A-plus Zumba-er. <laughs> we all know that Peggy Pinkham is a wonderful friend and person. Please join me in honoring her as this year's Volunteer of the Year. Next, I'd like to introduce Hannah Morley, who will be presenting the Character Development Award. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Hannah, and I'm a senior at the high school. Um, I am here to present this year's Character Development Award to a more than deserving individual. This year's recipient can be found patrolling town, possibly pulling you over, or in the high school. He has become a local celebrity, you could say. In fact, every morning, while directing traffic into the school, it seems as though everyone is waving through their windshields or yelling hi out their windows. At the school, he works as the local resource officer and goes above and beyond the job requirements. He inspires students to be their best, whether it be talking with them about their latest sports success or maybe he's asking about your day. He is the type of individual who enjoys helping others excel. This individual goes out of his way to provide students with resources, whether it be giving out an article on pool therapy to help recover from an injury, making it possible for a student to attend a police camp, taking the time to nominate students for awards and scholarships, or writing numerous recommendations. After school, he can be found at the crosswalk linking the Y in the school, ensuring the safety of the youth, where if you listen closely, you can hear 100, hello, Mr. Brown, from the children walking by. This individual truly cares about the youth in this community, always helping not only myself, but many of the youth reach their goals and their potential. He truly exemplifies someone who is contributing to a better us. It is with great pleasure that I announce this year's Character Development Award to Officer Larry Brown. Um, I'd like to now uh, really recognize staff for the years of service. We have a great staff team here at the YMCA, and I really want to say that it is a team. Um, we just recently brought everybody together, and um, the diversity and what we deliver for the community um, 
from everybody is awesome. So I just want to publicly thank and recognize everybody on the, uh, on the staff. But we do have some that have hit some milestones. Um, the first two I don't see in the room, but they uh, have been with us for five years, Michael Maxim and Heather McDaniel. So I want to thank them and recognize them. Uh, the next uh, three individuals have reached that milestone of 10 years, um, and uh, Alex Arsenal is one of them. And uh, the other is Emily, who you uh, just got to meet, if you haven't already, and IJ Pinkham, who has been coaching basketball here for 10 years. So please come up. Uh, the next one's a milestone, and you see her on Tuesday nights, usually at the front desk, um, but every five years she does get to join us for dinner. Um, and uh, this is a, a good story and somewhat of a, a sad uh, story too, but uh, we have three people that are in our 15-year uh, club. Uh, one of them we recognize today, and, and I think you all know him, Richard Teague, who does not like um, to come up in public, but we did have a meeting today and we snuck him up there to help move something and we were able to thank him for his 15 years. So when you see him, I think it would mean a lot if you recognize him. The other two um, are two people that actually work in s such different departments and at time of the day that until we had this big staff gathering over 15 years, they had not come together. And it was so neat to, to actually see them together and, and show us the importance of why we need to do uh, more of those. Um, so I'd like to ask Pat Fraker and Tracy Gothier to come up for their 15-year pin. And this next one doesn't happen very often, um, and it does end that years of service, uh, but we have some coming up on their 25 and 35 years, but this is for 20 years. Um, and she has done a great job in role modeling, particularly for um, the young ladies in our community, uh, helping them learn dance and thrive there. Um, I'd like to thank and recognize uh, Melissa Nine for her 20 years of service. Uh, Rick Elder, our board president, will come up for our next recognition. Thank you, Andy. My, my just in case cup of water, in case the voice goes. So, um, so uh, we have a large group of uh, trustees this year they are going to be transitioning um, off of the board after serving out their, uh, their terms. Uh, several of the members who are transitioning were uh, original to the same class that I came in with and um, been working together um, in stewardship of the YMCA for uh, over six years now. And um, so let me, basically we have, uh, for those that are here, we have parting gifts uh, to say thank you. And if each of the people, um, I will read off the names and if you could come up when your name is read and Andy will uh, share a gift and a thank you. Um, Leslie Blethen, who I don't believe is here tonight. Uh, Diane Gimble. Doreen Dunn. Actually, we should circle back. Leslie deserves a big hand. 
Andrea Hutchins. Andrew Morley. Peggy Pinkham. Peggy's actually been on the board more than six years. I, as far as I'm concerned, she came with the building, but uh, she's, she serves. <laughs> that, that sounded wrong, didn't it? Didn't it? Um, nah, Peggy's actually served several tours of um, board service, and um, she will continue, I'm sure, to stay quite active um, with our organization. Michael Pollard. Mary Williams. Uh, Bruce Rydell. And Ernie Whitehouse. One more. Uh, we're not ready to say goodbye to Hannah quite yet, but uh, Hannah Morley has been a student trustee for three years, and at the end of the school year, we'll be rotating off of uh, the board. But uh, Hannah, if you could come up and. Yeah. And she gets to take her dad's sweatshirt, too. So. Okay, now I have the pleasure of introducing, uh, we have um, five new trustees uh, coming on board, uh, I'll, if, three of whom are here this evening, and as I say your name, if you could stand up, uh, Lisa Carboni. <laughs> Alex Logan. Holly Stover, and um, also not able to join us tonight, uh, Bob Reiser, and uh, we had a student trustee join the board in January, Lily Sherburn. And finally, I will. Um, read off the names of the continuing trustees. And uh, for those that are here, once again, please stand to be recognized. Um, I will be continuing as board president. No need to applaud. No. Uh, uh, Mary Neal will be the board vice president next year. Bill Bailey, treasurer. Jonathan Tyndall, Secretary. Uh, Ann Barker. Brad Hastings. Kim Hodgson. Maria Hecker. Stacy Miller, <laughs> Hannah Morley, <laughs> Jen Orchard, Robbie Roberts, Sandy Wheeler. And Melissa Witt. Okay. Andy, special recognition.
Um, in your um, in your report is a wonderful picture of a great friend to this YMCA, um, Peter Mundy. Uh, in December, the board did recognize uh, Peter uh, to become part of our extended uh, Y family and be an honorary trustee. He's on his way back um, and will be joining us in April and, and we will be recognizing him in person at our May board meeting, but really want to take this time um, to recognize Peter as both an honor tr honorary trustee as well as just a great friend to this Y and this community. Um, as you can see, Mike Harrison um, uh, wrote up a real nice piece of, uh, of Peter and what he represents and what he's done for this organization. So um, we look forward to welcoming him in person, um, but really want to take this time to acknowledge him and we will do so with a very nice gift um, in May. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Well, I'd like to um, open up my remarks tonight with a series of thank yous. We've said thank you a lot already, but I feel an additional need to say thank you to, um, first of all, our outgoing trustees, who um, we just heard all of those names. Uh, each of these individuals has contributed in a meaningful way to the stewardship of this great organization. Um, to the Y staff, thank you for all you do you make it possible for the mission of the Y to be implemented and fulfilled. To our many volunteers, thank you. Um, all that the Y does would not be possible without the volunteers that step in and fill a huge role in this organization. And finally, to everyone here tonight, uh, thank you. Your ongoing support of our Y is invaluable. It's been a busy year. Uh, it hardly seems possible uh, that a year ago I was standing right here as incoming president, uh, not really knowing what I was getting myself into at the time. But as I re have reflected on the year, what's truly hit home for me is the incredible amount of good that is accomplished each and every day here at the Y. Uh, certainly any organization has its ups, its downs, its tense moments. Everything doesn't always run perfectly. However, uh, let me share a few, just a very few, of the great things that happen each and every day here at our YMCA. Our Live Strong program is, a, is a, one of the signature programs of the organization supporting cancer survivors in our community. Uh, our Arts Youth Chorus group and our Arts for All group uh, are two free programs that provide youth and adults with the opportunity to express themselves through music and dance. Um, our Child Enrichment Center provides daycare services and a Montessori-based education for the youngest uh, members of our community. Uh, this year, we started offering uh, free community days, where one Sunday a month, anyone in the community is welcome to come in and enjoy the benefits of this facility, free of charge. And an incredible accomplishment out at Camp Knickerbocker last summer, um, in addition to um, the great programming that happens there each and every day, was that over 5,000 free meals were served at Camp Knickerbocker last summer. Taking just those very few examples and layer them on top of a state-of-the-art aquatics facility uh, and programming within that facility, uh, wellness and senior programming that is constantly on the go, youth sports, camping programs that offer so many opportunities uh, to our youth, and you can see that the impact that this organization has in the community is widespread. As you can well imagine, it takes some resources to carry out the work of the Y. And when I, when I say resources, it's not just money, it's, all, it's people, it's facilities, and of course it is a little bit of money. Um, but in terms of human resources, your Y is fully staffed with a, a great dedicated team that is here uh, to, to uh, implement the vision and have uh, terrific outcomes for the people in our community. Our facility needs have been identified, quantified, and um, funds have been budgeted um, for addressing some of the priority items, an example of which is next week we should be getting delivery of brand new fitness equipment downstairs. Uh, which will be uh, a great benefit for members. I, I 
think back to the equipment that's down there right now, and I think it's the same stuff as when I first joined 20 years ago, uh, for the most part, not completely, but um, I think everyone um, in the, our membership should really get some benefit out of that new equipment. Um, and another example of um, investing in our facility is the advanced stage planning that's underway now for a new uh, playground area at the Child Enrichment Center. A strategic focus for the board uh, has been to build a healthy mix of revenue to ensure long-term sustainability of our Y. Revenues today are approximately a third comes from membership dues, a third comes from program fees, and a third comes from contributed support. The annual fund is an integral component in the Y's ability to continue to invest in its people and, it, and its facilities to carry out our mission. I'm very pleased to announce tonight that the 2016 annual fund is off to a great start. We've got 100% of returning board members uh, have pledged to the campaign along with 100% of leadership staff of the Y along with a great many of the of part time staff here at the Y. So the 2016 campaign off to a great start. That does deserve a round of applause. The Y's theme for 2016 is for a better us. It's a simple fact that people need certain things not only to survive but to thrive. We need to eat well, we need to stay safe, be active, we need to spend time together. We need to learn, we need to grow. Sadly, um, in our today's society, which, which is increasingly technological and polarizing, it's not always easy to get these things that we need. Seeing kids play outside, it's kind of a rare thing these days. FaceTime, it's not people to people. FaceTime is one of these now. Um, and it, instead of you know, other societal factors, we have you know, a continuing income uh, gap that, that grows rather than shrink. Uh, so there's a, a variety of societal things that the Y uh, comes together to try to step in and address. After 60 years of serving the Booth Bay region, the Y knows what we need to be our best selves. The Y provides a place to play, a place to camp, a place for health services. It provides hunger programs, learning opportunities, and first-time jobs. It gives parents childcare. It gives young ones a safe place to go. The bottom line is that everything the Y does is in service of making us a better community. Thank you all again for your support of the Y. There's a lot of wonderful things happening each and every day, and I'm looking forward to another year of service to this great organization. Thank you. The chairs. Many hands make light work. Okay. <laughs> yes, many hands do indeed make for light work. So, for um, anyone that is willing or, or able to assist with the gathering of the chairs after um, Maria's closing remarks, be much welcomed. So, for the benediction, I'll turn it over to Maria. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace, who pervades the heights, imprint on us your gracious blessing. Carry us over the surface of the sea. Carry us safely to a haven of peace, to the field of love, to the land where forgiveness and right relationship meet. We look, O oh God, with longing for Earth's children with compassion for the creatures, with hearts breaking for the people and nations we love. Open us to visions we have never known. Strengthen us for self-givings we have never made. Delight us with a oneness that we could never have imagined, that we may be truly born of you, makers of peace. Amen.
Thank you all for coming out tonight. Have a great evening.